Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And now we can see a lot of this information now that we have HRRR, which is the best weather model, if you ask in my opinion. The severe weather has kicked up. Not only do we have expecting strong tornadoes, chances for hail, damage and winds. Matter of fact, I'm showing the damage and winds. The lower level winds have been showing for the last few days are showing very strong winds, even up to hurricane force. So there's a lot of people that's in the danger of this storm, still bringing a lot of snow towards the northeast. So we are seeing major snowstorm as well, maybe even potential blizzards for a moment as they go through this transition. Now we'll update you on these temperatures also moving in. I'm still showing we're going to be in the 20s, even getting 20 degree wind chills towards the south side of the U.S. A very cold start to our Thanksgiving going towards the end of November. So we'll give you all the latest updates. Remember, timestamps are in the description below. If you're here for the severe weather, please use that link. You need to go see what's going on at the end of this video. I'm going to go and zoom in a little bit and see what's going on and what the potential impacts will be in for who. So you know what's going on. So go click the timestamp so you can get straight to that and see what's going on for you for today. Thank you all for your help. Now let's get into your video. Now for today, you can see it has ramped up just like that enhanced section that I posted yesterday that has stuck around. And I think maybe even a little moderate section might even kick in for today. This is a strengthening storm, guys. So for today, here's your chances for the tornadoes. The 2% in the green, the 5% in the brown. You have the enhanced section right here, and there's 10% and the significant severe. All that black means at least a chance for EF2 or stronger tornadoes. So here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for today, and the strong tornadoes is expected on the white and yellow line on top. There's also the damage and wind threat. You can see it's 5% and you have the 15% and a big 30% right here in the red. This is going to carry on for tomorrow as well, guys. So far, here's your cities and states at the threat for today for the damage and winds. And there is a hail threat as well. It is a little bit milder. I'm not showing a lot of big trails as well, but there are expecting large hail, 5% and a 15% big chance for today, guys. So, so far, here's your cities and states for a hail threat with these storms. You can see this from National Weather Service. Tornadoes, some strong, damaging thunderstorm winds, and isolated large hail are expected from this afternoon across eastern Texas and parts of Louisiana into tonight across the Delta region into portions of Mississippi and Alabama for tomorrow. Now, as you look at your cape, your lift, you can see right here your Energy for your storms. As you get towards noon and one o'clock, you start getting a lot of lift going through eastern Texas, guys. Now, this is wouldn't surprise me if you start getting all the way till 5 p.m. A chance for a tornado warning for eastern Texas. But you see how the lift has raised up all the way to 5 and 6 p.m. Even 7 p.m. You have a strong pocket of lift. A lot of cape going towards the very dangerous portion where you can get tornadoes all the way to northern Louisiana. Then once you go a little bit later, it shifts into Mississippi from 9 o'clock and on. Then it's southern Louisiana. So northern Louisiana, you are in a threat all the way until then. Then it's going to be overnight for southern Louisiana going into Mississippi as well. And as you see in the morning, it's still going to be in southern Mississippi going towards Alabama, the panhandle of Florida. Then that's going to weaken down as you go through tomorrow afternoon. Now this is still bringing chances for tornadoes. It's not widespread like you have for today, but it is still bringing lift. For tomorrow afternoon, going through Georgia, going through the Panhandle of Florida, but then it picks right back up for South Carolina, going towards the edge of North Carolina. So the tornado threat has expanded for tomorrow as well. A big area for the storm. So when you look for your chances for your significant tornadoes, which factors in dew points, wind shear, factors in a few different things that helps try and predict what our tornado best chances will be. And around 1 p.m., you can see it does go towards southeastern Texas for your best chance on these storms. And again, a little pink section, a very strong section, chance for tornadoes, guys. As this cells, just weak little cells, starts growing in that convection and pushing to the east, going into northern Louisiana all evening long. Now, all up here in Arkansas, you don't have a lot of that convection going through there, maybe southern Arkansas, but you still got chances for the damage and winds. You can see the frontline winds that could appear, and that's what this model is hinting at, that there's a lot of kidney beans as well going through northern Louisiana, then going through northern Mississippi as you go through 8 o'clock. Then you start getting that banding. Still could bring on tornadoes all night long with that banding going through southern Alabama as well all the way to midnight and early in the mornings. 
Whoever's going to be live streaming this tonight is probably going to be well into the overnight hours. And you see still damage and winds persistent as you go through midnight. This storm is moving further and further to the east. But now your lift is right around here, still bringing chances for tornadoes for tomorrow morning. So it's still showing that very strong banding. And then as it goes out towards northeast, this is still going to bring damage and winds with this as well. You can see right here, you get a lot of bowing out in the feature, and this is pushing all to the east, northeast, bringing all these winds with it. Higher elevations get more winds, of course, but now you're getting the freezing rain, you're getting the snow, but HRRR is seeing that this storm system for tomorrow is going to push further east than further north, and that would leave a lot of that snow and not wash it away. Now, as you look at your updraft helicity, let's know the size of your hail that can come out. You can see you start getting some hail storms in the afternoon for southern Arkansas, northeastern Texas, a little bit eastern of DFW, southeastern Texas, going towards central and northern Louisiana and central Mississippi, all the way till tomorrow morning. Then it starts right back up for southern Mississippi, going right into Alabama on your chances for your hail. Then it kind of weakens down on that system as it goes forward tomorrow. And that's what these lightning strikes are indicative to. You can see this with the Ural update next four days that's it now you get a lot more lightning strikes as you go through southeastern texas as you go towards 11 o'clock and noon time and when you get that white that's a lot of lightning strikes which is indicative to chances for large hail as that moves through louisiana mostly northern louisiana has more chances of a hail than southern louisiana as you go through the afternoon but then it does grow look at that Louisiana is really going to get some strong storms. You need the rain, which is a good thing. By 9 o'clock, you're going to get chances for that hail. Strong thunderstorms going through New Orleans, going through central Mississippi. Then it going towards southern Mississippi for tomorrow morning. Then through Alabama and starting to weaken down for the panhandle as well. Then as you go through tomorrow afternoon, now these thunderstorms are stretching all the way into the Carolinas. But it's not going too far. A little bit into Virginia. But that's about it. It's going to push right offshore. I'm not showing a big hail threat as for today. You see lightning strikes, but you don't see any of that deep red or any of that, that bright white that's in there that brings the chances for that large hail. So for tomorrow, you see it has grown greatly. A big marginal and a slight risk. As for chances for tornadoes, guys, as this winds that banding all the way over. Now you have a 5% for that little area for southern Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, like I've been showing you. But you still have a 2% all the way into the Carolinas to where a spin-up could happen where you cannot rule it out. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the tornado threat for Tuesday. Also, the damage and winds. They have it only as a 5%, but I'm showing a lot of wind threat up here. As a matter of fact, we've been showing that it is going to be a wind threat going towards eastern Ohio Valley and the northeast. I think that part will be updated. So far, here's your cities and states for the damage and winds, but I will show you what I have found. Plus, you have the hail threat for tomorrow, which I showed you before. It does not exist. But National Weather Service has as a couple of tornadoes are possible across parts of South Alabama into the Florida Panhandle, mainly during the morning and early afternoon. Locally damaging winds and perhaps a couple brief tornadoes will also be possible from Georgia into the Carolinas Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday night. So your chances for your tornadoes will change for tomorrow. It's a little bit weaker than what you have for today. So you can see this on your significant tornado primers. Now, all the way to the southern Alabama, depending on Florida, all the way till tomorrow morning. That's where you have that 5%. But then you have that 2% chance it just scatters across Georgia for tomorrow by tomorrow afternoon. Upstate South Carolina by early afternoon, late afternoon by the coast, very weak. And the coast of North Carolina, very weak. That part, I think, will be downgraded. Plus, as it goes through Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina, it looks more like it's going to be a potential chance for that damage and wind threat. Some straight line winds, maybe some flash flooding as well. I'm not seeing a lot of rogue cells, but you can't rule them out. And once again, we are already looking past 36 hours already. At the same time, you can see that storm system pushing to the east instead of pushing north and allowing people to get a lot of that major snowfall but showing what h triple r that is picking up very high winds still showing that weaker winds you get some higher winds and the higher elevations all the way down into mexico but as that transitions from the south towards the northeast still showing a lot of high winds and you can see this gfs was correct like i showed you in yesterday's video euro didn't show this gfs showed this and it's correct showing it can go from 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts get up to 60 that's what it is in that red for northern mississippi central northern mississippi northern alabama 
Tennessee started getting up towards 70 in the higher elevations. Kentucky also, Ohio Valley, 40 and 50. Getting towards 60 and 70 potential for West Virginia. Western Pennsylvania, 50 and 60, maybe even some 70 in there. Western New York getting across the lakes as well. And the coast of Northeast. Also, Southern Maryland, Southern Delaware getting some winds right there. Southern Jersey as well. Now, we only see till midnight on Tuesday, but you see the transition. HRRR is picking up a lot of major snow. It's picking up two feet right there in Pennsylvania. You see how along the coast, though, you're going to be rain, but it's not stopping everyone from getting snow. And this is all we can see. This is going to go further towards the northeast, more in the New England. Just bringing a lot of snow with this. A lot of major snow. All that pink right there is indicative of getting up to a foot over here for Vermont and New Hampshire and higher elevations. Higher elevations of New York getting up to a foot. This is bringing a lot of snow. It's not going to be along the coast, so a lot of y'all are going to miss it, but it is bringing a lot of snow. And you can see the latest update with the Euro that as you go into Tuesday morning, that's why the storm's coming in Tuesday morning, why you get your daytime highs is going to be fighting this snowstorm. But at the same time, Still got a lot of chances for the freezing rain for northwestern New York and western Pennsylvania. This would cause some possible power outages, guys. Now you can see what National Weather Service models is going to start adding up as you go through Tuesday, Wednesday morning into the northeast. Now, you have taken away your flash flooding towards New England because it's not going that high ridge. It's going out, which is going to bring y'all more snow. But you see where it's bringing one to two inches of rainfall coming with this severe weather guys we also see from here that it has changed as well so here's your flash flooding for today coming with that storm chances for flooding this is only a marginal guys now for tomorrow this is still going to move towards the northeast from the southeast mid-atlantic and going towards northeast we see how it's not so high no more of a high ridge this storm is moving out so you have a better chance of getting snow now as this storm comes in. Now this storm is still bringing that severe weather with it in the south, but also you got the cold air that's coming in right behind it, bringing that snowstorm right as you go through Thanksgiving, as this goes out through Northeast. So as you go through the 23rd, you start going towards Thanksgiving and you start getting that chance for that snowstorm. You get the cold air coming in, you got the precip coming from the storm in the south and from the west coast, coming across the US, getting in that jet stream, Bring in that chance for that snowstorm. So as you go through Thanksgiving, this storm system is going to start coming on down through the Rocky Mountains, bringing them precipitation in the freezing temperatures, bringing them snow as you go all the way until the 25th. Then the storm system still has precipitation in the freezing mark and bringing that snow across towards the upper Midwest. Now, if you take a look, you see that the freezing temperature starts raising up dramatically throughout the day as that goes out through Ohio Valley and the Northeast. Some of it is turning to snow. Some of it is not turning to snow. That's because it's really so far the Ural is seeing this storm coming in through the daytime. So as it starts off through the morning, it still has nice cool temperatures. So the Rocky Mountains, all the higher elevations will get snow. Come through the Central Plains, a good chance for snow if it comes on the timing. This is literally six days away. So let's Still keep this updated, but showing as it goes through the day, the daytime high starts kicking in and the snow gets less and less. All this snow right here is like half an inch. It's very small amounts. You see it's already broken from the precipitation as it carries across. Very light amount of snow coming with that next storm. But you can also see the way it looks. So as you're going with that heavy snow coming in for the Rocky Mountains, the central plains it starts lightening up and this is very light guys so literally in four to five days right when we go thanksgiving thanks after thanksgiving the snow is going to start moving in then as you go through the 25th look how it comes in through the daytime highs guys lots of times a lot of warm-ups and instead of heavy snow everyone's getting a half an inch to maybe an inch like i said before all that gray is a very light amount and as it goes out through the northeast after you get this first Major snow as it goes out through the northeast, very light amounts with it. Still, everybody's going to see something, some kind of novelty flakes. Everyone is going to see some kind of snow, but it's building up more for the Rocky Mountains and for the intercoastal northeast, not for the coast. That has been the census so far. You can see the same thing with GFS. Once again, this is 10 days. Take 10 days with a grain of salt. But before then, you can see that when you go five and six days, it's not bringing much snow with that first one. It's bringing for higher elevations, getting at northeast, 
more likely going to come across very light. Now, remember, all this gray is a very small amount. And just for trending purposes, you can see the same thing with the Canadian. Everyone's going to see a light amount. Everyone's going to see about and a half an inch. You might get an inch for some people, but it's going to be very small amounts. It's going to be for higher elevations, some for the upper Midwest, and you're going to have it for the Northeast as well, intercoastal. Now, just to show you, though, when all that storm comes in on Saturday, on the 25th, this is going to be your morning temperatures. So you can see how everybody's going to be in the teens to 20s. The freezing temperatures is going to be there, guys. But as you go through the day, this is going to be your daily highs on that day. So now you see why all the snow is going to be for the higher elevations in the Rocky Mountains, maybe in the Central Plains, because your highs is going to be there. And you see how it starts weakening down where you're in the high 30s and it don't stay cold enough for you to get that snowstorm. So it will be for a lot of people, but as it transitions through the evening, that snowstorm is going to get lighter for this region just because your temperatures are just not quite going to be there. But don't get discouraged because I still see a lot of good snow that is coming with this pattern. Remember, we're going to be in this pattern all the way to the end of November. You can see the update with the Euro next 10 days, all the way from the 16th to the 26th. More likely, just like what we are seeing in the model data. Now, if you go from the 21st to the 1st of December, you can see we're starting to get in that pattern where this gray is all one inch. I'll show you that before. Darker is maybe two. But you see how we're starting to get that pattern for the beginning of December. And you see how it gets a little stronger as we go towards the first week of December. It stays that way as we go through the 10th of December. Big chances for y'all to get this southern snow. It's just not going to be right here at the end of November. And as we go towards the middle of December, we're probably going to get a lot of snow. We're going to be up on a higher ridge on that point. So it's just going to be for the west side of the U.S. I will keep you updated. This is the latest information. Plus your latest information on your Arctic Oscillation Euro is finally coming around to what GFS is saying. Even the Canadians starting to trend with it. After we get this cold air in November, it's going to be cold in the beginning of December. And that's where you got your best chance to get that southern snow as we're getting into that deep trough on the west coast, high ridge towards the east coast, and that cold air coming down. So as we go towards the end of November, the beginning of December, I think is when that southern snowstorm could happen. Because you can also see here from your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation, that you're going to have very deep trough on the west coast putting you on that higher ridge towards the east coast. That's why you're dealing with this temperature battle on this snowstorm. But after that, towards the end of November, beginning of December, the west coast is going to be on somewhat of a high ridge. Above average, warmer temperatures should be coming your way. At the same time, this will put a trough towards the center and the east coast of the U.S. as we get that very cold air coming in in the beginning of December, guys. Still showing it's going to be very cold, and especially the wind chills. It's going to make a lot of this country feel like you're in the 20s, even teen temperatures. So real quick, I'm going to walk you through this as we start on Thanksgiving on Thursday on the 23rd. This is the temperatures you're going to wake up in the morning. You're still going to be in the 20s for the upper Midwest. And with the wind chills, it's going to make a lot of the country feel like you're in the 20s. It's going to be a very cold November. It's going to be very cold on Thursday. Now, it's going to warm right back up for Thursday evening. So those aren't going to be your highs for the day. Now, as you go through Friday on the 24th, cold air is going to come down again. And it's bringing those cold wind chills once again. But now you can see it's bringing the single digits down with it. So there is going to be a lot of cold feel like temperatures. And that means the GFS and the Canadian was right. The Euro is seeing this now. Now, as you go through Friday, it is going to warm right back up again. But now this cold air is starting to go further and further to the south. As you go through Saturday, you can see this. Now you're waking up Saturday 20s coming even further into our country wind chills making a lot more people feel like you're just very cold higher elevation still showing negative 20 degree wind chills guys now it's going to warm right back up but this is going to be your highs for saturday on the 25th now as you go through sunday here it comes down again very cold temperatures very cold wind chills on Sunday. Now, it will warm right back up again for Sunday, but look at this. Now, your highs are going to stay in the high 30s and 40s for the southern side of the U.S. It's going further and further to the south as you go through Monday. Look at Monday. It's going further to the south now. A lot of 20s moving in, and the wind chills. Monday is going to be very cold, guys. This is going to be Tuesday on the 28th as well, and your wind chills moving in. This is going to stay into December, guys. So we're going into our winter. I think the best chance for that southern snowstorm is going to be late November, early December. All right, let's go through these storms a little bit and see what's going on with the timing of these storms. Remember, the time is on the top left, and that is central time. 
Now, as we go towards this afternoon, you see these cells starts picking up towards the southern side. Let's concentrate mostly just on what's going on with these tornadoes for right now, guys. Now, you see, as you go through the afternoon, it's coming through eastern Texas. You start getting some cells popping up towards Alexandria. It has a little chance for a hail core in it as you go through the afternoon. So let's bring it a little bit closer. You can see a little bit better. As you go through 3 and 4 o'clock, it starts picking up in these storm cells for northern Louisiana. Then you start getting that banding coming through as you go through 5 and 6 o'clock. Now, these cells you got to watch out for as well. As this pulls up from the Gulf, they could get some quick spin-ups. But you see right here where you have the strongest outcome, the model is suggesting that you're going to get a lot of chances for hail cores to come with those storms as it comes through the evening from 4 through 6 for northern Louisiana going through Mississippi all evening long, still bringing that banding. Look at that banding at 10 and 11 o'clock, still coming through the city of New Orleans, through Hammond, through Mississippi, through Alabama as well. Now it's pulling all those in through, as you go through tonight into tomorrow morning. Now this is gonna start pushing further to the east. This is where you have your chances for your tornadoes as you go through tomorrow morning. As you go through tomorrow morning, it's gonna go into southern Mississippi. You get these hail course chances for hail, this is signifying chances for these supercells. You might get some water spouts. Well, you got one going towards Montgomery for tomorrow morning. As this keeps going towards the east, this goes all morning long through Alabama, through Georgia. It's just going to stay in that direction all the way until the 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Then it's going to stay around Georgia and the Carolinas. Now, when you get around tomorrow afternoon, this is where it goes from Georgia, Carolinas, mostly upstate, and North Carolina, and then the coast of South Carolina and Georgia for the evening and overnight. Now, this is something else. As this storm moves through the east for tomorrow night, there's something else that's going on for Florida that you really can't see. So as we go through tomorrow evening, it starts getting that bandy, but once it goes on that ridge and pulls out overnight for, overnight for Wednesday, look at this big banding of rain. That's going to be passing through northern Florida. And it could train even longer. That's a few hours right there. Could bring y'all some flooding. So just be aware of that. So as we take a little bit different look on the rest of the country, not dealing with these tornado threats and damage and winds, still going to go move through the rest of the country. You can see for tonight, as we move through this afternoon, that is going from Arkansas and Mississippi, but it's going through southern Missouri, southern Illinois, western Tennessee, western Kentucky all night long. Then it's going to move into Indiana, mostly Indianapolis. But you can see these winds that's kicking in with it as this storm cell starts moving to the east for tomorrow morning. So I cover the south. Let's try to cover Ohio Valley a little bit and go towards the northeast as you go through all morning long, bringing these storms, guys, all the way till, till 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then we have that storm system coming in for the northeast. Then you have the chance for that snow, that freezing rain to kick in. As you go for tomorrow morning, then tomorrow afternoon, dealing with those high temperatures. Still cold air in, but you dealing with the high temperatures. You have storms and you're getting snow. So you could be getting some thunder snow in the higher elevations as this comes across for tomorrow. And you see how you're getting storms, but you're getting a lot of snow in the higher elevations. So that's definitely where it's going to be adding up at. Everyone else is just going to be getting rain and storms. But it is staying for the whole northeast bring in major snow guys so that's going to be a lot of snow for a lot of people psalm 133 behold how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard even aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as a dew of hermon and as a dew that descended upon the mountains of zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forever. Amen. Remember, all glory always goes to God, everybody, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every day of your life, especially through these storms you're going to deal with for today and tonight. God bless you and your families. For all you believers out there, I wish the best for every single one of you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day. Everybody.